So in this video, we're going to talk about how to animate weight, or rather or slightly more broadly, weight and balance, because the two are, are deeply connected. Uh, but weight is a simple um, heading for this. So um, let's um, begin to think about how you start to make things feel heavy in animation. Um, and the reason I've, I've taken the uh, a frame from The Thief and the Cobbler here, this is a, a scene that I animated, or rather I animated uh, with a little help from Art Babbitt, one of the uh, great Disney animators who worked on The Thief and the Cobbler and who's, I uh, was essentially his assistant on The Thief. Um, and uh, this is a, a scene which I think came out well when you really, really feel the weight of this iron ball on the cobbler's chest. And the reason you feel it so well is because he's leaning backwards. And if you if you draw an imaginary plumb line there through the iron ball down to the ground, you can see it's firmly rooted on his center of gravity. And that's what makes this ball feel heavy. So let's give you a few examples. You've got to know where your center of gravity is. Here, this character Morpheus is a great free rig you can download from Creative Crash. Um, he's standing in a vertical, or if, if we take a plumb line down the middle of his body there, um, you can see that his feet are well in balance. And if he now lifts one of his legs up, let's say he's gonna lift up his right leg and go to here he would fall over. And the reason we know he would fall over is if you, apart from the fact that we can feel it, but if you take the plumb line down there, it ends up here, not here over his left foot. He would topple over here. The only way that Morpheus can do this by lifting his leg up is to move his center of gravity over to the right, uh, that is to say to the screen right, so that the weight of his body then falls on his heel. This is a hard thing to get right, and it's one of the most common errors uh, when um, looking at student reels, is, is for things to feel slightly weightless. Here's an example taken from the animator's survival kit. Um, and this baby feels in balance, even though he's walking kind of out of balance because he's a toddler, toddler, but his, his whole weight at this moment in time is over this screen left leg. And so we know that he's not going to fall over yet, though he may fall over any minute now. Compare that with Morpheus. His weight, of, his center of gravity is not over the leg that's bearing the weight. And that's why he would fall over and the toddler wouldn't. So uh, you'll notice that this applies to a walk cycle. When, when a character's walking, here's Morpheus uh, taking some steps. Um, uh, that as long as we're in the contact position, which is what we're in here, uh, both of these feet are going to be uh, in balance. But as soon as you go to the passing position, where one leg is lifted up in the air, then the center of gravity has to shift over the wet leg that is taking the weight. You'll know this from having animated the walk cycle and having had your feedback in the videos. Um, you can't lift up, this, this bodybuilder here cannot lift up his, his, the screen right leg without the center of gravity of his body shifting over to screen left. He will fall over. Now, the Italian artists of the Renaissance knew this. Michelangelo knew this when he was making uh, uh, his David. And the, the, they call this contrapposto. Um, and uh, essentially, it means that, you know, every part of the body has to be in balance. So uh, uh, here, um, the contrapposto is um, the, the we well, certainly we can see we can see where the weight is. The weight is all going down this this um, uh, screen left leg. There's almost no weight on this right leg as well. By the way, I highly recommend you attend drawing classes. Going to life drawing classes is a very good way of getting the hang of this stuff. Very important you get a good teacher. Not so many people these days who can teach life drawing. But if you get a good teacher, you can learn a, a ton about um, how to draw the human body and how to make it feel heavy and in balance. Um, uh, Every action has a, has a reaction. That's Isaac Newton. You'll have learned that in physics. Um, and this character here, uh, this javelin thrower, does feel in balance um, because all the weight of his body is being borne by this screen left leg. This screen right leg is taking very little weight here. He's leaning over to pick up his javelin, which is then going to throw towards screen right. But it's this leg here that is taking the weight. And this one on the right here is 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 um, just for balance. Here are some life drawings that I did at university. Um, uh, uh, again, here most of the weight is is on on the left foot, but the right foot is taking some of the balance. You can actually see that I've committed one of the one of the most basic errors in life drawing <laughs> is that I've I've not managed I've, I've started drawing in the middle 
probably with her bottom uh, and then moved upwards so I've managed to cut off the uh, feet and the hands but there's some nice stuff going on in the middle here which is why I've included this um, this drawing here's another one um, here you can see if we drew a plumb line down the, the center of gravity here down the middle of the body most of her weight is being borne by her right leg here um, here's a um, uh, uh, an example of uh, two people walking along she's obviously carrying this enormous crate and you can you can feel the weight of it because she's leaning so heavily over to the left to compensate for the weight of this crate and here you can see who's carrying the weight here she's all doubled over he's not even carrying a single twig let's take an example with Morpheus um, how heavy do you think this ball is the answer of course is it's incredibly light this could only be an air-filled ball um, um, it could only be something very, very light for Morpheus to be able to handle, to, to be able to pick the ball up like this. Now, if we go to another frame and, and uh, bring the ball slightly closer to his body, it could be a little bit heavier now. It still doesn't feel very heavy. If we drop the ball down here, it starts to feel slightly heavier. This ball could be made of uh, uh, something, uh, certainly not made of concrete, but it could be made of some sort of um, uh, light plastic and then here now it's starting to feel a little bit heavier still not heavy enough to be concrete or anything like that but because he's now leaning backwards because he's bringing the ball close to his center of gravity it starts to feel heavier here we go back to the thief and the cobbler this feels heavy because it's very close to his center of gravity he's almost toppling backwards if he didn't have the ball on his chest he would topple over backwards um, and that's the key is 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 and it, it's, it's as much a feeling as anything else but the, in, the important thing is to know where the weight is in any drawing and make sure that you um, that you make things feel in balance because remember that these things have no real weight this box doesn't really feel that heavier but if our character was leaning further to screen right it would feel heavier so just to compare those two Morpheus drawings uh, screen left screen right this obviously feels heavier than this one and there's nothing intrinsic about the materials being used they're just pixels it's all about how you pose it when you did the bouncing ball ball animation at the beginning of the course uh, it was all in the uh, in in the spacing and the timing a light ping pong ball will bounce very high on the screen something very heavy like a bowling ball will hardly bounce at all um, the same is true when you're animating big characters, a big creature like a sea serpent or a big monster, or in this case an elephant, is going to move relatively slowly. Not to say that elephants can't move rapidly when they want to, but they tend not to. Um, uh, and if you contrast it with, say, a fly, here's a Buzz and Scuzz from Racing Stripes, which is a film that I worked on. Um, they can, flies can start, change direction almost instantaneously, so fast that the human eye can't even see it. And that's because they're very, very light and have very small mass. It's all Isaac Newton in the end. Um, uh, it's all about the physics he learned at school. Not that I pretend to be any kind of expert in physics, but we do want to be experts in cartoon physics. That is tremendously important. Here's a, another character uh, in, in balance. This character is in balance. And again, we've got this imaginary line running down the center of the figure. Here's a character called Kaylee from The Quest for Camelot, which is a film I worked on. Um, and the question here is, does Kaylee feel heavy or light here? Um, and I suggest that she actually feels rather light because even though the, 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 uh, the weight in this drawing is traveling down her, her left leg, because her foot isn't bent, because she's standing on her tiptoes, it makes her feel excessively light. And if you watch this scene in the film, it does feel tremendously weightless, almost as if she's on wires. Um, here's another example of a character in balance. Everything must be in balance at all times. Uh, and finally, uh, Wiley Coyote tells us that you can break all of these rules at any time, but you have to know why you're breaking them. And the fun with the old Warner Brothers cartoons was that um, Chuck Jones broke the rules, but he knew what he was doing when he was doing it. So that's an introduction to the basics of weight. We'll come back to weight repeatedly throughout the course because it is one of the hardest things to get right. But hopefully that gives you a, an introduction and a basic understanding of how these things work.